What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to do something a little bit different. Now, I'm not a tech guy, so I usually don't do these type of videos, but I figured this is a special case. In my new machine, I have the Threadripper 3 3990X. So I figured why not let you guys get a glimpse into what I have in this machine that I've recently just had built and run some benchmarks against it as well. I'll run the numbers, show you guys what comes out, and then you guys can take those numbers and run with them. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, cool. So before we get into benchmarking, I just want to show you the um, different items that I'm working with here. So to start off first, I'm using this MSI motherboard. It's the TRX40, the creator series. And so um, yeah, I'll leave a link down in the description of this one if you want to see what this one is here. And then for my SSD drive, I'm using this one from Viper Gaming. It's the VP4100 PCIe Gen 4. And so there's one terabyte of this that I'm using. And then for the RAM, I'm using this company called G-Skill. It's called the Trident Z RGB. I have 128 gigs worth of RAM that I'm running on this. And then for my operating system, I'm actually running Windows Home. I don't know if there's any type of difference between running uh, Windows Home and Pro in this particular case for benchmarking, but I don't think there is just from what I've been reading online. And then, um, yeah, for the GPU, I'm using the 5700 XT AMD GPU there. And then of course, for the CPU, what we're benchmarking is the 3990 Threadripper 3. And before I get started into the benchmarking, once again, I want to give a shout out to Fifon for this microphone. I have it set up with the retractable arm and I have the pop stopper here. So if you want to pick up this microphone on Amazon, click on the link down in the description. It's fairly cheap and I think it's working out pretty well. So let's see what benchmarks we want to go with first. I downloaded a few benchmarkers here. And so there's actually this one from CG Director where we can actually benchmark the viewport in Cinema 4D. So let's start off with that one. I haven't tried this one out yet. So we'll be going through these results together. There we go. So I think I select this null right here. Okay, yeah, so run benchmark. I'm gonna click on this and see what happens here. Okay, so it says your C4D viewport benchmark score is 697.4 let me see if i could go to the website to see what that compares to okay so i'm on the cg director's website right now let's see our score was 697.4 it doesn't look like the viewport is scoring too well there let's see 690 so yeah it looks like they're getting an average around 714 which is pretty far down the listing which i'm surprised about maybe the viewport isn't multi-gpu I'm not really sure about that, but um, let's run Cinebench. Let's see what Cinebench is gonna give us a score of. So I'm gonna close out Cinema 4D. Let's go over to Cinebench, double click here. Let's see what kind of results we're gonna get in Cinebench. I think we're gonna get much better results with this. So let me accept it. Let's click run. And let's run this through its paces and see what happens here on the Cinebench render. Wow, so it's going pretty fast there. Man, I see all those buckets going. And that scene looks pretty good there. So it looks like we're going to get our results fairly quick. So our score is at about 23,885, which is at the top of the list here. That's a pretty good Cinebench score. Let's see. Yeah, so I ran this earlier. It looks like I'm getting a little bit more points here. I guess the next closest will be this Intel Xeon Platinum which comes in at 16,536. So we see that this 3990 is kind of blowing everything else out of the water here. So let's run another benchmark. Let's see what else we got here. Let's go over to, let's try V-Ray. So I've never used V-Ray before, but since I have a benchmarking tool, I thought it'd be cool just to try out, just to kind of see where our numbers hit. So let's see what we got here. Okay, cool. So it's given us the option to benchmark the CPU and the GPU. So just for giggles, let's just do both. I'm gonna click start. Hopefully it benchmarks them separately. I believe that it will. Okay, cool. So for our GP, our CPU, sorry, looks like we have a close score of just a little bit under 70,000. So 69,000, or are these two separate scores? I guess we'll, um, I guess we'll go check it out on the website here. It's giving me the option to submit my score and the GPU is at 446. So let's hit submit score. 
And hopefully it leaves our numbers up here so that we can see them. Okay, so I'm logged into the website. I hit submit score. Thank you for your benchmark scores. So yeah, here's our score here. Okay, cool. So that's the results that we got for V-Ray. Just a little bit under 70,000 on the CPU side and on the GPU side, 446, which I know the GPU, I think that's on the low end here, but on the CPU, this will be on the high end here. So you can always go to the V-Ray site to kind of compare those results to the other people and what they benchmark. But let's see what we got for Corona. Okay, so this is the Corona render engine which i've never used this before either but i was just curious to see what the benchmarking scores were going to come out as so it looks like it's already going here okay so it looks like we have our results here it says that okay cool so yeah render time of 18 seconds for 16 passes on this scene here that doesn't seem too bad to me what resolution are we at we're at 1024 by 576 so I think that's performing pretty well there. Let's see what else we got. Let's run this benchmark here for Blender. Let's click next. Then I guess we'll use the highest version here, 2.82. Let's click next here. And then it has all these files available here. So yeah, let's run the benchmark for all of these and see what our results come out as. I think for this one, I'm just going to do CPU on this one. So let's click start benchmark. And let's see what our results are here. Okay, so it looks like Blender is finally done. Let's look at our benchmarks here. So for that BMW scene, it's saying that it took 32 seconds. For the classroom scene, about a minute, 34 seconds. For a fishy cat, 50, um, 55 seconds. Kuro, a minute and 15 seconds, and then Pavilion, one minute, 38 seconds, and then Victor is four minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, so this one is called the Black Magic Raw Speed Test, and so I believe if I click on this little gear here, it will give us a bunch of different options on which we can speed test. So let's first try out 4K at a 12-1 compression. Let's hit Speed Test. Let's see where it shoots us up to. So the left side is our CPU and the right side will be our GPU. So again, I'm not really sure what these numbers are, but you know, they're here if you guys want to check them out and see what they compare at. You know, somebody that's more in depth to really breaking these numbers down. Maybe you guys could leave a comment down below and let everybody know what they're looking at. but. I figure since the benchmarking tools are here, why not use them and just see what shows up here. And so I'm not sure what these numbers mean, like I said, but it looks like over here, it looks like if we're using 4K footage, we can edit at around 360 frames per second, just on the CPU alone. And then um, I guess based off of the GPU, it got to what, about 210? So let me stop this. Let's see what happens when I hit 8K. So I run a speed test using 8K here and we'll see what happens. So it looks like it's dropping at about on the CPU side around 89 frames per second. And on the GPU side around 55 frames per second, which doesn't seem too bad at all. Again, the best test is once I put this stuff into practice, but you know, Benchmarking tools are there just to kind of help give a gauge of what we can expect. So hopefully some of these benchmarks could kind of help you guys gauge where this machine lies. Like if the 3990X is something that you were kind of thinking about buying, I know it's an expensive CPU. So hopefully these numbers will kind of give you a glimpse of what it could do. I've been using it for the past couple of weeks just on my day-to-day -day workflow. It seems to be working out pretty good for me. So, I mean, that's the most important thing, but take these numbers, look at them, and see if you wanna purchase it yourself. So thank you guys for watching what I did here. If you find this helpful at all, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment down below, you know, some benchmarks that I missed that you might wanna see. And as always, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.